If you're looking for a crossover SUV with good power as well as great off-road capabilities, the Bronco Sport Base has got you covered. Now this is the entry trim level to the Bronco Sport and it is incredibly capable. It's got 4x4, four four, 5 different GOAT modes, it's powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine as well, so there's a lot to cover off inside of this vehicle. Now this is just going to be a short walk around on this specific one. If you're looking for a more in-depth look on how the media screen works or a little bit more in-depth on how the steering wheel and the cluster screen work, check down in the description below as well because I've got a link off to those ones. Now I also want to give Yorkdale Ford a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check them down below for their contact details as well. Now one other thing, I had an interesting message from a commenter, Miss Washington. She said apparently her four-year-old son Caleb loves watching my video. So Caleb, thank you so much and hello. And I actually want to do something special for you. So get your mom to comment down below what your favorite car is and I'm going to be sending you a poster of that car. But guys, let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun and see what's going on with the 21 Bronco Sport Base. your styling of the Bronco Sport. Now, the base version of the vehicle like we're looking at here is going to have very similar styling as the other options. So when we look at the outer banks, the big bend, etc., we will have similar vehicle styling there. We do have the option for fender flare kits directly from the factory or aftermarket. It's going to be the same black style like what we're looking at here. And then there also is a paintable option, which means that we can match it to the body color of the vehicle that we've got as well. So you've got some options. If you're wanting something a little bit more unique, the fender flare kit will definitely do that. Looking at the tires themselves, the Bronco Sport Base only does have one available tire size, and that's going to be this 17 inch that we're looking at. We do have Continental Rubber on this thing. Now, as I mentioned, this thing is 4x4, which means that we do have good capability for off-road, and that's going to be default. Canada or the US, we are looking at 4x4 inside of this vehicle, so definitely useful if you're going to be going off-road. As we start to move forward, we do have our LED headlamps. Now, inside of the base, we will not have fog lamps. We do have to be in the higher trim level options in order to get those lamps there as well as some of the other technology. Like we're going we're gonna to get a front facing camera inside of the Badlands, reverse sensing system, things like that are going to be standard in some of the other trim levels. But it is nice to know that if you're just looking for something that's going to kind of get you from A to B, giving you good off-road capability, the base is really hard to beat from a budget perspective. All right, now taking a peek underneath the hood of the vehicle. So the Bronco Sport does technically have two available engine choices. Now, with, there's a little bit of a kicker to that because it's got a 1.5 liter and a 2 liter turbocharged, but the 2 liter turbo is only available in the Badlands trim level of the vehicle. It would kind of be nice if Ford opened that up so you could get it across any trim level, but here nor there. Now, looking at the 1.5 liter EcoBoost is a great engine. It's an i3 with cylinder deactivation as well, and it is fairly powerful. And that's one of the cool things is that we've got a 1.5 liter three cylinder that is fairly powerful. Like it's got 181 horsepower and 190 pound feet of torque. So plenty of power when it comes down to it. Nice look. This is the same engine, the same essentially setup that we're going to be looking at inside of the Escape as well. But taking a look, we've got easy access to a few things so we can easily top up some fluids if we need to. We can easily check our oil and then we've also got easy access to the battery at the top. So really, really nice to know that we've got the capability to easily top some things up and check some things if we need to. Now underneath the hood itself, it actually is fairly clean. Ford did opt for a tiny little EcoBoost cover, which I mean, at the end of the day, I kind of like it. I like it when manufacturers decide not to go with what most people are doing and covering up the beauty that is an engine. Because I guess psychologically, people look underneath the hood of a vehicle and they're like, what is happening under here? But there is just something beautiful about the way that an engine is laid out and designed. And I think Ford did a pretty good job looking at the base. Now, taking a peek at the actual headlamps themselves, we do have fairly easy access if we need to change a bulb out. It doesn't look like it's going to be overly challenging, just based off of the overall layout that we have here. Now looking at some rear styling for the vehicle, we've got our Bronco Sport badge along the side there, Ford badge along the left hand side, and because this is the base, we don't have any sort of trim level badge along the right hand side whatsoever. But we will have our backup camera, that's going to be standard. We've got our rear wiper, again standard across the entire vehicle lineup. And then we've got two individual buttons for the glass and the door, we'll look at how those work in just a second. Alright, next up, taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. 
So as you can see there, we've got our Bronco logo along the very back of the fob, which looks really, really nice. Along the front, we've got our unlock and our lock button, as well as our horn or a panic alarm. And then we've also got our physical key. Now the key itself, this is going to be standard to the regular Bronco base. If we look at any of the higher trim levels, so we look at the Big Ben, the Outer Banks, etc., it is going to be a push button start and we'll have an emergency access key instead. But this is the way the fob's going to look inside of the base trim level. And that brings me to an interesting point because if we look at the back of the Bronco Sport, we've We've got two different buttons there. So we've got a glass button and a door button. So we've literally got the flexibility to be able to open up the glass by itself. Look at this, so, so nice. And then we've also got the flexibility to be able to open up just the door by itself. So the other button along the side, and there we go. Now, we are a manual lift gate there, and that's going to be the same across the entire vehicle lineup. So not just in the base, but also in the fully loaded Badlands. So no matter what, you're not gonna get foot activated power, things like that. You will have to look at the escape as an option instead, if you wanted some of those other features. But looking at the inside, let's actually take a peek at the cargo dimensions. So as you can see there, we have plenty of width, depth, and height to the vehicle. Now, a few things to point out, there actually is quite a little bit of storage space here. And one of the cool things is that we've got some flexibility with this back. So with the actual cover itself, we do have a thermoplastic rubber tray that's available from the factory. We can literally pull this thing out, and this thing will actually slide on two different levels. So we can get it kind of matching up what's going on with that second row. Now, having said that, second row, we can fold this thing down very, very easily as well. So just along the driver passenger seat, We've got some buttons here. So just along the top, we're literally gonna push that button in order to be able to fold the seat down, make sure the headrest is in all the way first. There we go, as you can see, the seat is now down and that's gonna be the same for that driver passenger side. But look at the difference in the depth when we have that second row folded down. Now, it's not a completely flat fold. It is a fairly flat fold. So it is nice to know now we are 60-40 split. So 60% driver, 40% passenger. So we can fold down one side or the other if we wanna create a little bit more space for ourselves. All right, now, as we move inside of the vehicle to the back end, so a few things to point out. We do have the option of putting in a tray along the top there as well. Nice if we want to store some extra things, so create a couple layers of storage there. On top of that, we've got a little light along the top there. So what we can do is we can actually push that in order to turn on some lights that are actually flexible along the top of the actual lift gate. So definitely useful if you're camping later on at night. You want to see exactly what's going on. We've got that option. So really, really great on Ford's part that they included that. Looking along the right hand side, we've got a 12 volt power point, and then we've also got another little light in the back there, and it's got a nice little pony, so a nice Bronco along the back as well. All right now, as I mentioned, this thing is actually fully removable. We do have the option for a thermoplastic rubber tray instead, with a Bronco logo, and it looks really, really sharp. We can get that as an aftermarket accessory if we wanted to. But this tray, we can actually fully pull out and remove as well. As you can see, we've got a little bit of storage areas along both sides, so not a ton, but we've got a little bit of space back there. And we've also got a mini spare tire, and our jack is right underneath the mini spare. Now, that's one thing to think about, because inside of the base, we don't have the option to get that full-size spare instead. We would actually have to get the trailer tow package directly from the factory to get the full size spare tire. So if you're going to be doing some off-roading, I definitely recommend, like you may need to look at the big bend as an option, but definitely get the tow package from the factory. You'll get that receiver. You'd also get the full size spare tire as well. Now, looking at some standard technology that we will see inside of the base version of the vehicle. So as you can see there, we will have our backup camera. We do have the option of adding in the reverse sensing system aftermarket if we really want to have it in there. And on top of that, we also do have our blind spot system. So that lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. That's gonna highlight orange. And then we've also got our lean keeping system. Looking at filling up fuel inside of the vehicle is also very straightforward. So as you can see there, we've got a little cutout and it's a capless system. So just insert your fuel hose, fill up, and you're good to go. Now looking at the actual fuel quality, minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just your regular 87 gas, so 87 octane. Don't need to use a higher premium fuel, but at the same time, you will notice a little bit of a difference in the performance if you do, but it's definitely not necessary. Looking at second row spacing inside the vehicle, so I'm six feet tall, driver's seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. I still have a nice amount of knee room, good amount of foot space, and up overhead, I've got about four inches of headroom, four and a half inches of head space up overhead, which is definitely a nice thing. Now, a few things to note about the Bronco Sport, and that's across the entire vehicle lineup. The second row seats are locked into place, so we don't have the option to recline these things whatsoever. We can't slide the seat forwards and backwards the same way we do in a vehicle like the Escape. So definitely something to think about. If you're looking for something where you can adjust the 
seats a little bit more, you might need to look at the Escape as an option. But like I said, this thing is very spacious. Now, one thing to note, the Bronco Sport Base, we don't have the option for a sunroof, but if we looked at the Outer Banks, the Big Bend, etc., we would have the option for a sunroof, but that would have zero impact on headspace for the second row. So definitely a really nice thing that we do have that flexibility. Now, a few other things to point out back here. We don't have any cup holders inside of this vehicle at all. So something to think about along the driver passenger side, though, we do have a little cup holder on the actual door itself and then second row. So we can easily store some things there if we want to. We don't have pockets inside of the behind or in the second row, I should say, behind the driver passenger seat. So no zippered pockets like what we'd see in some of the other trims. But we do have a tiny little pocket along both the driver passenger side on the inside of the seat. So we can store a few things, mostly just like cell phones and things like that inside of that. Now, as we start to move down, we do have a few power points in the back. So two USB ports, so our USB and as well as our USB-C. So we can still plug some things in to power them off if we need to. Now, over and above that, up overhead, we don't have any cabin control lights or any sort of vent control, things like that in this specific vehicle. But we do have a handle up overhead and it does have a tiny little clothing hook as well if we need to hide, if we need to store some things. Right now, taking a peek along our driver's side door. So this trim level of the vehicle does not have intelligent access. So we do need to physically unlock in order to be able to get inside. Looking along the driver's side door, we've got our unlock and our lock buttons. We've got our window control so we can figure out what's going on with our side view mirrors. We can also adjust our windows, so all four. We've also got a little storage area, so along both the driver and the passenger seat there. Now, as we hop inside, just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. So as you can see there, we've got a series of different buttons. So very first one is going to let us unlock the actual lift gate. We can figure out what's going on with our running lamps. Honestly, I always just recommend keeping to the auto setting. And we can also increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen. Now, inside of the entire Bronco lineup, we will also have a manual adjusting steering wheel. So you can see that there, we just pull that down. As we start to move down, as you can see there, we can double pull this latch in order to be able to get underneath the hood. And then we've got our OBD2 reader just along the very top there. We can just kind of make it out. It's a little bit hidden. Now, one other thing to note, the driver and the passenger seats inside of the base are going to be a manual adjust. So we've got a series of different levers there in order to be able to adjust the seat. This first one's going to let the seat go up and down. We can adjust our backrest. And then we've got a little lever there between our legs in order to move the seat forwards and backwards. Now looking at the first row inside of the Bronco Sport, this thing, I, like every time I see it, I hop inside of this thing, it is absolutely beautiful. Like, I love the look of it. I love the Bronco logo on the steering wheel. We've got our Sync 3 media screen and a ton of other features inside of this thing. Now this is just going to be a quick look at the actual vehicle interior here, the steering wheel as well as the media screen. If you're looking for a more in-depth walk around, trying to figure out how to set up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, connect your phone, use navigation, things like that, check down into the description below because I have put together a comment comprehensive video on how these systems work. But let's look at some of the basics. So inside of the base version of the vehicle, we are looking at cloth seats inside of this thing, but cloth seats, but at the same time, they are actually surprisingly comfortable. We do have the flexibility to be able to adjust the headrest there as well. And adjusting it, same thing, it is comfortable. I think that there could be a little bit more cushion inside of this thing, but at the same time, it is pretty nice. Now, one cool thing about the base version of the vehicle is that it still is loaded with a lot of same technology that we would find in some of the higher trims. So we do have the Ford Copilot 360 package, which is going to give us our backup camera. We've got our blind spot system, and we've also got our lane keeping system. So our lane keeping, lane centering, which works three different ways. Way number one, if we start to veer over to lane without signaling, it's going to shake the steering wheel almost as if we're running over rumble pavement. Way number two, we start to veer over into a lane and the, st the steering wheel literally will give us kind of a gentle nudge back into our lane, almost as if we're going bowling. And you know those old school bowling lanes that we would use in order to hold up so that our ball doesn't, go we don't get a gutter ball? That's essentially the way that that system works as well. And the third way is going to do a mixture of both. So it's going to give us a little bit of a steering wheel shake and then nudge us back into our lane as well. So it is nice. Now it is not a full lane centering system like what we would see in some other vehicles, but it is nice to know that we at a minimum do have that basic safety feature. So I love the fact that we've got that option. Now, looking along the left-hand side of the steering wheel itself, we've got a series of different buttons so we can control what's going on with our volume. And we've also got our basic cruise control. Inside some of the higher packages, we do have the option for the adaptive cruise control system as well, but not so much inside of the base. Along the right-hand side, we can figure out what's going on with the actual cluster screen. And then we can hang up and answer a phone call. We can change between songs, radio stations. We can mute. We can also do things with our voice as well by pressing that voice command prompt on the steering wheel. 
The right stick is going to let us control what's going on with our windshield wipers, and we can control the front wiper as well as the right wiper in the rear. Now, as I mentioned earlier, looking at the key fob of the Bronco Sport base, it is just going to be a regular key in order to start this thing up. When we get into the big bend and the outer banks, etc., that's going to be a push button start, but if you don't care about the technology, it is what it is. So, very, very straightforward there. We've got our beautiful Sync 3 media screen there, which does support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's one of the nice things is because your vehicle is not going to have factory navigation inside of the base version of the vehicle, but we can still use Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze by connecting our phone to this media screen. So we've got quite a little bit of flexibility there. And I love that fact because if you don't have factory nav inside of the base, we won't have it. We do still have the flexibility to connect our phone and run off of that instead. So we'd have a lot of different options that are available inside of this media screen. So some cool ones are some driver assistance settings. And that's one of the nice things is because even though this is a base vehicle, it still has quite a lot of options. As I mentioned, we've got that lane keeping system. It's got a pre-collision assist system. So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's actively going to break for us as well. We've got our trailer sway control. So this specific one doesn't have the trailer package from the factory. We could add that on aftermarket if we wanted to. But one of the great things about the Bronco Sport is that the trailer sway is going to be there regardless. And what that's going to do is if it senses that there's trailer sway going on in the vehicle, it's automatically going to apply engine braking to get that sway under control. We've got our cross traffic alert. So as we go to back up, if the vehicle senses a vehicle in behind us coming perpendicular, it's going to let us know of a potential collision there as well. And there's a series of other driver assistance settings that are great. We've got things like our valet mode. We've got some voice control modes. We can switch between a daytime versus a nighttime mode as well. Moving down, we've got our volume rocker and our tuning rocker. We've got our auto start stop button. So the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the engine if we're stopped for an extended period of time, we can toggle that one on or off if we want to. We can easily change between songs or radio stations. We can mute out if we wanted to. We can also adjust what's going on with our actual screen. So we can hot button press to turn the screen off if we find it a little bit too distracting. Now moving down a tiny little bit, we do have a little storage tray there, which looks fairly nice. We've got single zone climate control inside of this version of the vehicle, as well as the basics for our actual climate control settings. Moving down a little bit more, we've got another little storage area. We've got two USB ports, so our USB as well as our USB-C, as well as a traditional 12-volt port. So our regular cigarette lighter adapter, we can plug that into there as well if we want to. Now moving down a little bit more, very similar to what you're gonna see inside of the Escape, the Bronco Sport doesn't have a traditional gear shifter. It's an actual rotary style, like what we're gonna see inside of the Escape and the Edge, etc. But it is very straightforward. And one of the cool things about this thing is that if we're in drive, we don't have to actually rotate it back into park. If we're in drive or we're reversing into a spot, we can stop turn the car off and it's automatically going to bump us back into park as well. So really, really great safety setting there. Now over and above that, we also do have our electronic parking brake. We're literally just going to pull the brake up in order to turn it on. And we're going to make sure we actually hit the brake and push down in order to turn the brake off. So very straightforward. And we've got an auto hold setting as well inside of the base trim level. So that auto hold setting is a cool one because if we've got that setting turned on and we take our foot off the brake, if we're stopped, it's literally going to hold the car in place. So it is cool that we do have that inside of the base version. Now on top of that we do have a series of different GOAT modes. So our Go Over Anything mode and that is going to do something different. So we've got our Normal mode, Sand. On top of that we go the other way. We've got our Eco, Sport as well as our Slippery mode. Like I said each mode is going to do something different. Like when we're in the Slippery mode it's going to change out our traction and stability control for wheel slippage versus our Sport mode. I honestly recommend keeping it into Sport the majority of the time. And the reason why is because Sport mode holds onto the gears a little bit longer so it gives you an infinitely sportier performance. So this thing does have a nice amount of power, 181 horsepower, but it's going to feel like a lot more when you're in that sport mode because the RPMs are going to rev higher. So it's going to rev higher before it changes out gear. So definitely something to think about. But it is nice to know that we can easily adjust these things on the fly if we need to. Now, moving down a little bit more, we do have an armrest, and it does have another 12-volt power point in there as well. So again, if we need to power some things up, we've got a lot of spaces that we can actually do that. Now, as we start to move up overhead, we do have an auto dimming rear view mirror inside of the base trim level, which means that if the vehicle senses that there's, ooh, which means that if the vehicle senses that there's things a little bit too bright for us, it's automatically gonna dim that mirror out for us. Up overhead a little bit more, we've got our basics for our cabin control lights, and we've also got our sunglasses holder, a little business card holder and our visor, and we've also got our vanity mirror, no light on this one, 
but we've got another card holder on the front and we can also extend this thing out if we need to block a little bit of sun as well. So it is nice to know that even though this is the base, Ford didn't skimp on some of the features. There is quite a little bit of stuff packed into this thing. Like I said, it is very reminiscent of some of the other trim levels of the vehicle. So the big question is going to be, do you need those extra features? Yes or no? Because if you're looking for something that's budget friendly, off-road capabilities, the Bronco Sport base is a really, really great option. I mean, if you're looking for a boxier style vehicle, something a little bit more off-road and unique, the Bronco Sport is a really good option. Like People have been telling me they're getting their cars confused for Land Rovers. They're getting all sort of compliments on them. It's kind of cool. Like what Ford's done with the overall styling of it. Like I, I love what Ford's done with the styling of the Bronco Sport. Um, I do wish that the two liter turbocharged engine would be available in some of the other trim level choices. I'm excited to see if Ford ends up introducing either an electric or a hybrid version of this, which, I mean, why wouldn't you? I think it's going to be a year or two out before Ford does that, but I think it's going to happen. So, but I mean, first impressions overall, like it is, it's just such a night and day difference. Like the overall feeling of this thing in comparison to like looking at the Escape. Like it's bigger, like headspace is kind of ridiculous how much space you get inside of this. Now this is the S model, which means we don't have, or the base model, which means we don't have the option for a sunroof whatsoever. But even if we did, it's just a small one. Like it's not gonna be the same panoramic roof that we'd see inside of the Escape. It's more in line size-wise, I would say, to the EcoSport. So that smaller kind of like, the, the tinier type of a um, sunroof instead, so. All right, now I'm actually gonna switch it out to sport mode. And that's one of the cool things is that we've got the shift on the fly. So we can literally like shift out to whatever mode we want to as we're driving. And the sport mode, trust me on this one, whatever car you're driving, if it's not as manual transmission, switch it to sport mode if your car's got that capability. You'll thank me later. And like the big reason why is just the amount of pickup and go that you get when you're in that sport mode. Is it hangs onto the gears longer and it just feels so much nicer. Like, watch this. One, two. <laughs> you can see the RPMs just like shooting up, revving higher. The car's like, oh, hello, we're alive again. <laughs> you can hear it go. It's like, oh, I'm alive. I'm here. It's so good. So good. That, that, like I said, sport mode. Sport mode will do that for you. It's funny, like I advocate for sport mode so, so much. And there's like, it's no surprise why, like when you actually drive with it on, it's so nice. But like I said, the overall ride dynamics of this thing, actually pretty dang nice. Okay, I got a little obstacle coming up. So I'm gonna like just do a quick drive over. Oh, boom, nice and nimble. Go over some bumps here. So nice. So nice. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get one of these things for off-road. Like, that that's the kicker. Like, the off-road purposes, that would be the big reason why you'd want to look at the Bronco Sport versus the Escape. This, like, the Bronco Sport sits a little bit higher up. On top of that, like it, it, the GOAT modes that it's got, it's actually, it's interesting. So the GOAT modes inside of this one, like we've got our Sport, Eco, Normal, Sand, etc. Pretty much the same modes that we're going to find inside of the Escape. Until you get into the Badlands version of the vehicle. You've got a couple extra options that are available there. There's bash plates and a few other things as well. They're going to be unique to the Badlands trim level. So if you're looking for a car, if you don't, if you've got the budget for it, I would personally go with the Badlands trim level of the vehicle with the Badlands package. Few reasons why, you get the two liter turbocharged engine, you get a front facing camera, and you get a lot of other things that you're just not gonna get in the base model of the vehicle. But again, we're going base to base. So if you're looking the Bronco versus the Escape base, for a couple thousand bucks more, the Bronco I think takes the cake. Like it's a little bit newer, yeah. It's based on the same platform as the Escape though. So that's why we've got so many buttons and so much technology that seems the same because it kind of is the same. It's, it's based off of the same Ford platform. Now, one thing that does set the base version of the Bronco Sport apart from the Escape base model is the media screen. So the media screen inside of the base S version is the Sync 3 screen, which gives us Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. We don't have that option whatsoever inside of the Escape, so inside of the Escape base. But when we get into the higher trims, it is there as an option as well. So 
Which way you go with is going to ultimately depend on what you need and what you find important in a vehicle, but I definitely recommend looking at the at least the, the the Bronco Sport. If you're contemplating the Escape, take the Bronco Sport for a test drive. You will not be disappointed that you did. Ah, and the one thing, the big difference, the media screen, when you're in reverse, such a big difference. Now, one kicker, I've gotten used to having that reverse sensing system, so not having that in a car is kind of weird. Um, I mean, you're going to have to be in one of the higher trim levels in order to get it, but it is available as an option if it's something that you like. Well, folks, that was a quick look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport base. What did you think? From a feature perspective, feature-wise, everything that's in this thing is actually kind of surprising. Like, I love the fact we've got that media screen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities, and we get it in the base trim level. That is so, so nice. Wouldn't be the trim level that I would go for, though. I would still say the Badlands would be my recommended choice because of the bash plates, the front-facing camera, and other things. But that's because I would take it off-road. If you're never going to take it off-road, maybe just go through the odd trail and things like that. The base is a great option. Uh, what did you think? What do you think? What version do you think you would go for? Drop down in the comments section below and let me know. And if you have any questions, reach out and let me know as well. More than willing to talk you through any problems you might be having. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, take care. When it comes into the fuel quality, manufacturers make... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> as we start to move down a tiny little bit, as you can see there, we did also... <clears throat> As we start to move down, as you can see there, we can also pull in order to be able to open up the actual trunk. Nope, that's the hood. <laughs>